What is the latest you can tell us on what's going on right now? So we have to understand that what we are seeing unraveling in front of our eyes is a reality that has been there for at least a decade or two decades, meaning an empire of evil headed from Tehran, which has an objective, has an objective to radicalize, derail any peace processes, uh, overthrow regimes, bring havoc and terror throughout the Middle East, of course, eliminate Israel with a jihadist philosophy with proxies, but also hold terror cells all over the world. Now, this empire of evil has shown what it wants to achieve, and in front of it, it was met by a strong coalition. It was met by an incredible Israeli army and air force, incredible young officers and commanders, and by an incredible partnership of nations, which I want to thank wholeheartedly, a coalition of nations led by the United States of America, and I want to thank President Biden for his leadership. Israel and its allies, including uh, the United States, as you know, uh, intercepted 99% uh, of those Iranian missiles and drones coming towards Israel. President Biden uh, told Prime Minister Netanyahu he should consider this a win, his word. You should consider this a win. <laughs> Is this a win, and what message does all this send to Iran? So it, it, it was an overall campaign from all, like, four corners of the Middle East aimed at Israel. Uh, it was almost like a Star War uh, night because you had the incredible technologies that went into this uh, throughout in various layers and incredible co coordination. And it shows that we are united when we are together and when we fight against evil together. Um, naturally, I absolutely agree that we are victorious and that we were victorious in this, but one has to also take into account that this was a very aggressive and brutal attack on Israel. And under the circumstances, I think the decision of the war cabinet, which is convening right now, will take into account all the measures that are required to defend and protect the people of Israel. You've called uh, what Iran did a declaration of war, but Iran seems to have telegraphed uh, what it was going to be doing. Do you assess Iran really wants to spark a wider war, a conflict with Israel, or are they more interested in narrowly responding to that deadly attack on Iran's consulate in Damascus, Syria? So I would say, of course, that what I meant was that in terms of the size and scope, are we talking over 500 drones, missiles, and, and uh, you know, ballistic missiles, etc. This was a very aggressive and brutal attack, which looks like a declaration of war. But I also added immediately to say that we are not seeking war. We are seeking always peace. We want to reach peace in the region. That's what we are striving for throughout the years, and we were met by a horrific uh, massacre by Hamas, and it's another proxy of Iran on October 7th. Iran has been holding war against us for decades with its proxies. And if you look at one small example, which exemplifies the entire story, Iran took over a tribe called the Houthis in Yemen, 50,000 people, made it its proxy because they are Shiites fed it up to its neck with armament of an empire, cruise missiles, drones, and ballistic missiles to a tribe of 50,000 people, blocking the high seas and, of course, elevating the cost of living of every family in the world. That's the story. That's what we are meeting. We are meeting an empire of evil which wants to eradicate all values of the free world. That's why their drones are killing all over the place in Ukraine, the drones are killing in other places, and it's about time the world stands up to them and says, no, we won't let you, don't, as President Biden said, don't. And therefore, because he says don't, and we all say don't, that's why they were met with a very strong response last night. But I think the world has to understand that this is another development in the war which Iran is waging against the free world and has to be met accordingly. As you know, Mr. President, uh, some of the far-right political voices in Israel are pushing for a very harsh Israeli response. 
uh, the national security minister, Itamar Ben-Gvir, says Israel needs to, quote, go crazy. Does this attack, in your perspective, require a harsh Israeli response? How forceful of a response should it be? And would that risk a major regional escalation? So, as I said, we don't seek war. And I think that we all understand uh, the balance that is needed in this situation. Uh, we are holding a very intimate dialogue with our allies. And I think uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu is talking to many world leaders. He had a call with President Biden last night. In addition, of course, to our allies, other countries such as Britain, France and others in the region as well. We are considering it all. We are acting cool-headedly and lucidly. I think the cabinet now is convening exactly to discuss it. So, of course, we have, a, as a democracy, the only democracy in the region, we have a multitude of voices. But if we look at it objectively, I think we're operating in a very um, focused way and a very uh, responsible way. And I'm sure there will be a decision accordingly that will make sure that we protect and defend the people of Israel. And, of course, uh, serve the idea of this coalition that has emanated all of a sudden in front of our eyes in uh, opposing uh, the aggressive acts and the, um, uh, uh, and, and the operations of Iran in the region for so many years. As you know, the United States, the Biden administration, says it won't participate in any offensive action against Iran right now. Is Israel willing to take unilateral action that potentially could put U.S. troops and assets throughout the region at risk. So let's first speak about the grand picture. There's been a war with Iran for decades. May I remind you that there was a very bold decision of President Donald Trump uh, to get rid of Qasem Soleimani. The, the, war, the warlord, the, the, the commander of terror in the region for years, who was the head of the National Guards of Iran. So these guys keep on spreading terror and havoc. They've been attacking American forces for, for years, including this year in various uh, spots in the Middle East. And, uh, and I believe that it's in the inherent interests, national interests of the United States and, of course, of, um, of European countries and regional countries that want to go to peace and go, want to go to normalization with Israel, that we are strong and united and act accordingly. As to the technicalities of what will be decided upon, this, of course, I leave to the Israeli cabinet. And they're meeting uh, as we speak right now at the Defense Ministry uh, in Tel Aviv. The United States, as you know, helped strongly defend Israel against this latest Iranian attack over the past 24 hours. What obligation, Mr. President, does Israel have to address President Biden's repeated demands to dramatically ramp up humanitarian aid to the Palestinians in Gaza and to reduce civilian casualties there? So indeed, uh, Israel has uh, elevated dramatically the um, humanitarian aid to the people of Gaza in a dramatic way, in a dialogue, a frank and open dialogue with all our allies, first of all, by way of airdrops from all, from all over. Secondly, by opening terrestrial crossings, including now a northern crossing from Zikim and a, a crossing uh, in Erez and a crossing in Karni, and a, I mean, all over the place. So there's a major inflow of humanitarian aid to Gaza. Of course, the maritime uh, route, which has been operated in a very impressive way, which was an initiative of the UAE, and now America is, and the United States is about to lead it uh, in a very professional manner. So there is a major effort uh, to meet the demands that are required for the humanitarian assistance of Gaza. And by the way, it's the right thing to do. But let me explain to your viewers something which is really important to mention. There are still 135 Israeli hostages in Gaza. They are going through hell. Their life is in question. They are under huge threat, let alone the enormous pain that they're going through, such as rape and torture and other things. And the problem is that it's been discussed day in, day out, 24-7 in Israel, is how to, be, how to bring them out. 
And then it comes the question by the Israeli public, how come you're supplying so much humanitarian aid to Gaza when our hostages, when our citizens are there in peril, we don't even know their fate? Because the Hamas is, is so um, cruel that they don't even allow us the names of those who are alive or dead amongst them. And therefore, these are honest and frank discussions in the Israeli public. We have to make sure that our hostages are back, are back as soon as possible. I know it's the commitment of the United States of America, of President Biden, of leaders from all over the world. We must do it. We must carry it out as much as possible. Unfortunately, Hamas, in the last 24 hours, for the fifth time, declined another compromise and another yeah. uh, scheme that was proposed again by the mediators in the United States of America. And it's about time the world understands that it's Hamas who is refusing to move on a hostage deal.